。喂，你看到我了吗？我是 Nancy。我看到了，刚刚看到，现在又不见了。你戴了帽子。嗯。喂，你看到我了吗？我想要把它那个。哎，我怎么都弄不下去？我看见了，吴哥，那个他这个一零九四是牛顿，我以为你讲一零九四啊 ，Boston， 他往这边走。呀，离我们这儿 ten minutes。离你们这，离你们那里还有十分钟啊？哦。我 traf local traffic 很多红绿灯。哦，好的。要经过 ，otherwise 很近了，其实很近。啊。就在 Beacon Street 上啊。Right on Beacon。去过那边没有？啊？你有没有在那边走过？我没有在那边走过，我是我想是那个我，我 ，I'm thinking that's where it is. Well, I'm not sure. 不晓得是不是，一会不会是，拉大便就，啊，那那我们就不一定，我我们再考虑考虑啊，我不 commit 了，有点麻烦我就不去了，太不麻烦了，我先不看你是绝对不麻烦，这么拉他就是。衣服每次就方便，拖的一地都是。Nancy， 我看到你了。我知道。嗯。你好，吴一。哎，你好。嘿、hey,。青枝。嗨。Mary。刘宇。好，你好。青枝。大家好，各位好。大家好。惠美，你好不好？好。以前我们在家也不会这样。你怎么隐形的呢？厨房啊，厨房。对啊，啊，从我们这里是二点九里，就顺着那个 Beacon。OK。Newton 的方向走就到。哦、oh, ，OK， 好，好像很容易走啊、哦、，Beacon Street。很容易。对、right.。嗯，现在可以我这样。嗯，那我现在我这样。还有橘子。行。一一包有二十个橘子。我们要五包，五包。对。我们要五包。这样。然后，我不够吗？不够，你自己在家也可以吃嘛。多喝的点啊。啊，多的你你不是那个。我这样讲话，他们听得见吗？啊、我讲话他们听得见吗？你们有吗？你们有了吗？你看青枝没有？嗨，好久没有联络，你们好吧？<笑>你好不好？我们隔三个钟头，有时候我打电话就。对，比较比较难哈，都是。有没有 travel？ Right。最近有没有 travel？ 啊、uh, ，没有，最近没有。不过我十二月要去是台湾。哦、oh,。嗯哼。去多久？去两个礼拜。<笑>我有个 granddaughter 在在高雄，在那儿 Fulbright， 在那儿教一年英文。Oh, 太好了 ，Yeah。Hi, Sunshine. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Wu Yi. 你好。Hi, Spencer. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, today, oh. You've seen the last eight. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello.
跟这一个。刚刚才晓得，我想我们会去。我就在你们，就在你们家旁边嘛，是吧？呃，不在我们旁边，二点九里啊，老古城。我刚才才看，吴瑜告诉我，因为那个、哦、我那个通知又到 junk mail， 我没看见嘛。哦，对呀、啊。嗯哼哼。可以可以在在那个 Walnut 呃 Street 旁边那里面。啊，过了沃，从你们那里去，过了沃纳，那左边就是那 park 啊。嗯、哎，那就是那个在后湖附近啊。后湖呀，一定在。要过了后湖，过了那 intersection。过后湖。明天天气很好。短短的，大概只有一点六迈嘛。对，它跟我们这个对面的几乎一样。对对对。有没有计划吃吃 lunch 怎么样？明天、啊、好像没有讲。那里那里附近有一个呃呃 seafood jumbo， 那里有 lunch special 啊，倒是蛮蛮理想的。<笑>就在那个 Newton Center。现在改的名字不叫 jumbo 了，叫叫 something 我忘记。叫叫这个厨厨什么顶厨？顶厨叫顶厨、嗯。外面还是那个 jumbo sign、哦。它有它有 lunch special， 也有可以点这个。那个也有也有点心也可以，也可以都可以。嗯哼哼，哦，是以前的 Jumbo。对，他现在外面还是写 Jumbo C 部，但是他的店名字改成改成这个顶厨。嗯。哦，以前是广东菜嘛？对，现在现在也有。他有四川菜也有。嗯哼哼。OK， 还还没去试过。他地方蛮大的，所以还可以。嗯嗯 ，OK， 啊、哦，你们最近去吃过了？我们最近吃过，对，嗯。丹宁印是不是在里面吃？对，在里面，呃，大部分都在里面吃，外面也有 table， 啊，嗯哼，都可以啊，嗯哼。大家都不戴口罩的，口罩。嗯。Last week at seven point one six percent, that was the highest. In 21 years, and that continued to tank demand for refinances, which are down 86 percent from a year ago. There are less than 150,000 qualified borrowers who could now see any savings from a refi. Kind of an amazing number. Now, the vast majority of homeowners have low rates, which is why so few homes are now selling. That is, demand for mortgages from home buyers was down 42 percent from a year ago. Oh, is this a news program? <音>哦，是谁的新闻节目？Prices <音> 我们再过一分钟就开始了啊，那我想在开始之前，啊，我们大家去把音消掉，我们才会等一下见到主讲者才会清楚，否则会干扰，谢谢啊。我们现在就把音消掉好了，再再等一下我们就开始了。Marjorie请消音，看还有没有？啊，大概啊，Marjorie还没有消，Lily，Lily等下会消的。来看，最后检查一下，也请大家消音。大概丽丽还没有消，龙丽丽还没有。我刚上来。哦 ，OK， 好，谢谢。好，那我们现在就开始了哦，见两点了。嗨，大家好，欢迎大家来参加十月份的自由谈节目。今天我们要谢谢薛正玄给我们请到了巴熊。
熊元俊先生来跟我们讲他在建筑、绘画和诗词的创作三方面的啊，这个他可以说他现在是辉煌的成就了，不能说他的他的。他的志趣，他的兴兴趣了。那今天这个郑玄，因为啊、呃、家里有事情，他不便出面，所以啊、嗯，我们在这里大家跟他问好。啊、嗯，巴布熊在好像在五十年前，一九七二年就做过我们 G B C C A 的会长了，很多年以前的事情，是我们资深的会员啊。嗯大概在二十多年前吧，我刚刚还跟，刚刚还跟他跟他回忆一下，好像他以前曾经把他的水彩画在 G B C C 也有跟我们 present 过，画的很好，所以我都觉得影响到我那个时候在退休的时候，甚至于想都想说去学一学水彩画，因为他画的那个好像也是这个时候秋天的这种秋天。树林啊，校园的那个景色，我到现在都还有这个印象，有这么深的印象，画的这么好。所以呢，嗯，今天我们也很高兴的能够请到巴布熊多年的好朋友啊，索菲亚和来给我们介绍一下我们这位多才多艺的老前辈啊，巴布熊熊元俊先生，请索菲亚来介绍。Hi, hi everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to today's、uh, lecture. Robert Yuan Junxiong came to the United States in 1952, and he got his、uh, architecture degree from University of Illinois.、Uh, later on, he came to MIT, where he received a master's of architecture. And I'm so glad that. He and his equally talented wife Dora decided to settle in Boston area. Bob's design for the past fifty years is all over the world in the United States, Asia, and Europe.、Uh, he will show slides of his、uh, projects, but in later life he also designed three additional. Project one is MIT's Lincoln Lab, and the other one is New England Medical Society's headquarters in Waltham, and the last one is 125 Federal Street in Boston. One of his favorite, my favorite, rather,、uh, design is the Baltimore Symphony Hall. I had the pleasure to admire it, watch it from inside. Not to a concert, but to our daughter, last do,、uh, the youngest Lara House graduation, it is remarkable. And Bob is the member of、uh, New England.、Uh, I'm sorry, Bob is the member of the American Architecture Institute. And、um, let's see. After. He no, in his midlife, he decided to pursue his other love, and that is watercolor painting. And his shows, his his shows, group and、uh, solo, all over the area. Now, I also have a favorite is Bob's painting of the <laughs> Joseph. Juno Harbor in Alaska, and that painting won the first prize, and it's a beautiful one. What I did not know about Bob is he has another talent. He decided to write poems, and he can you imagine? He published a book of painting his paintings and his poems, and、uh, it's called Looking Up, painter paint. paint Poems and、uh, paintings by Bob Xiong. Bob is not just talented artistically; he is also avid tennis player and a skier. We've skied together in New 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 Hampshire with his family. And as uh, uh, 
we just mentioned that in 1972, Bob was the president of GBCCA. He ha has contributed to the society. And uh, also he revived the Chinese family camp, which was started by the GBCCA founding members, but then it stopped and Bob decided to revive it. So I think the family uh, camp is still going strongly. So I am very happy that uh, Bob is still around area and that let's give him a good hand. Bob. Thank you. Uh, we, thank you, Sophia, for your kind introductions. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Tang Yao Wu and Claudia for inviting me to talk to you today. I'm going to speak in English today. Uh, it's uh, much easier for me, and I think I can explain better in English. Uh, and I, I want to thank uh, Yao Wu particularly for helping me to put together the slides and training me, spending hours and hours to teach me how to uh, operate it. So I hope I can operate it uh, well to today. Uh, the slides I'm going to show you today are samples of my uh, work in architecture, painting, and poetry. The three things that has been the main pursuits in my life. I'd like to first tell you how they came into my life how they became my passion. Uh, then I will show you the slides. Uh, Yao Wu, can you, um, can you switch the slides on? Hello? Yep. Six, six, five, two, nine, four, nine, one, seven. Um, this is my office uh, at uh, the old Green Exchange Building in Boston. Uh, it's John Brennan Associates. This particular hall was used to be the uh, Green Exchange Hall. We uh, we st we renovated uh, this to be our main drafting room and with the library at the center. As you can see from the slides, from this slide, uh, architecture is a very collaborative uh, activity. Uh, growing up in China, I was never aware there was such a thing as a profession in architecture. When I first came to the, to the United States in 1952 to attend St. Norbert College, I could not find a major, a field that I could be passionate about. So I uh, switched from physics and mathematics to history and to economics. After three years of switching and searching, I still couldn't find my major. I got desperate and wrote to my father. He suggested that I talk to a family friend who was then a professor at Yale in New Haven. So I went there to talk to him and he said to me, I remember when you were a boy you were always good in drawing. 
have you considered of being an architect? Architect, I said, what is that? After he explained to me, I decided to give it a try. So I transferred to the University of Illinois. After my first course in architectural design, I was hooked. For the next 55 years, architecture became the primary passion in my life. After I graduated from MIT in graduate school, I worked in my professor's firm, Anderson, Beckwith, and Heibel Architects. I became their chief designer. After 10 years, a classmate of mine at MIT asked me to join his new firm that he and his friend has just founded, John Brennan Associates. I worked there for the next 35 years and served as the uh, design principal of the firm. We had a very diversified practice, uh, doing commercial buildings, offices, hotels, laboratories, corporate headquarters, public housing, student housing, academic buildings, art centers, college campus, urban design, almost every building type except hospitals and jails. In the early 1980s, when this photograph was taken, uh, we were at our peak. Our office had over 300 people with satellite offices in Hartford, Connecticut, New York City, and um, Istanbul, Turkey. I retired in 2004, but continued to work at home in my one-person office, working on projects that I didn't have much chance to work on earlier. Small projects like private residences, renovation, additions, and so on. In uh, uh, in 2015, my project dried up and I entered my second retirement. Meanwhile, I also taught architecture. After I graduated from MIT, I was undecided between practicing and teaching architecture. So while still working full time at Anderson, Beckwith and Heibel, I volunteered to teach at the Boston Architectural Center, which later became the Boston Architectural College. I taught there for six years until I finally made up my mind to stay in practice instead of teaching. In 2004, uh, Boston Architectural College asked me to return there to teach. And I taught there until 2018, way into my retirement. That was me doing a painting demonstration at the annual meeting of the New England Watercolor Society. I was invited together with two other artists to paint the same still light setup. Each one of us take turns to explain our different approach to painting step by step. Each one had one hour to finish our painting. It was a hectic experience. However, this was not typical. For the most part, painting was very, very private. It was a very private affair. I started painting very early in my life. As long as I can remember, I was always making drawings. 
I, I was always the teacher's pet in art classes at school. When I was a teenager, my mother got me an art teacher. His name, you may know about him, his name was Guo Dawei. He was a student of Qi Bai Shi. He taught me to paint watercolor from nature and from still life. I remember overhearing him telling my mother that I was better than most of the art students in the art institute where he was teaching. But I never took seriously of becoming a professional architect, uh, I mean artist. Uh, my teacher Guo, good, uh, as good an artist as he was, he has to scramble to teach in order to make a living. It was also at that time I attended an art school uh, during the summer vacation in Hong Kong, and uh, as well as taking uh, art lessons, the Chinese brush painting uh, from another teacher. After I came to the United States, I continued to paint. I had my first one-person show of my watercolor at St. Aubrey College. After I got into architecture, I stopped painting altogether and devoted full time uh, to my career. When I reached my mid fifties, I felt the need to do something that I could just, I could do all by myself. Uh, unlike th those large architectural projects that involved so many people and took so many years. So during a two week uh, vacation, my wife Dora accompanied me to attend a watercolor workshop. That got me restarted uh, in, uh, in watercolor again. I like the quality of watercolor. It's relatively clean. It's fast, it's fluid, it's, it's spontaneous. It makes a great, a perfect complement to my full-time job in architecture. So I painted watercolor exclusively. So I began to get accepted into the jury show of the New England Watercolor Society, Rhode Island Watercolor Society, and American Watercolor Society. I, my painting soon started to win prizes. People started to buy them to improve my techniques and refuel my motivation. I took workshop almost every year with famous teachers. I donated all my proceeds to charities as one more way to keep motivating myself. Finally, five years ago, I felt I had painted all the paintings that I ever wanted to paint, and I was starting to repeat myself. It was time to quit. So after some soul searching, I walked away from the piles of sketches and layout of unfinished painting in my studio never to touch them again. Well, this is an example of a poem, of a recent poem. I'm not going to read it now, but I, I just want to show you that I pay a lot of attention to the way the poem look. With my painting form, follows function, just as in architecture. This, I, I need to scroll this painting up so that you can see it. 
This is a painting in my book. It's not a typical painting because, because it was painted in plain air. Most of my paintings were done in my studio where I can spend more time and, and paint with, uh, from photographs. I hated to paint outdoors. I hated the discomfort. Nevertheless, I made an effort to paint outdoors at least a few, few days every year because it was good to paint directly from my eyes, through my eyes, instead of seeing things through a camera. This painting was done during a workshop. It was raining hard. I sought shelter under the portico of South Church at Copley Square. Um, and, uh, so it's much looser than most of my other paintings. Uh, I was uh, rushing through the painting during the rain under the particle yeah. of South Church. I, I like to paint indoors because I want to capture these special fleeting moments in life, such when light hits a place, an object, a face, a gesture or event, and trigger a strong surge of emotion in me as if to compensate for its brevity. I'm sure you have experienced similar moments like that. These fleeting moments seem always to reveal some fundamental truths. I want to capture them and relive these moments. Photograph is often, often the only way to do it. This painting, of course, is an ex exception. I think I was able to successfully capture the moment during the rain. Uh, let me tell you the reason why I hate painting in plain air. In 1959, I received a traveling fellowship to go to Europe to study and make sketches of the many great buildings that I studied in architectural history. For nine months, I sketched on street corners and had to endure the sun, the wind, the insects, and the curious onlookers. I was totally burnt out after that and avoided painting outdoors ever since. Here are some examples from my European sketchbook. This is uh, the cathedral at Cologne uh, Germany. This is the cathedral at Salamanca, Spain. The chapel of Notre Dame in Ranchon, France, designed by Le Corbusier. For these uh, sketches, I used the first generation of felt tip. It had a felt tip that was spring-loaded. When pressed, it would soak the tip and produce the blackest darks. So I will paint from the dark and slowly work my way to the lighter tones as the tip dried in the process. This is the interior of Hagia Sophia, Istanbul. Wait a minute. 
this is the um, the interior of uh, the church of Witzen Weinigen, Heinigen in Bavaria, Germany. Uh, architecture was not the only subject that sketched during this trip. Uh, this is a market in Innsbruck. And this is uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Now, I'm going to go back to my book. This painting was done 40 years ago, shortly after my first watercolor workshop. It was my first painting that people offered to buy. But my wife said that it belonged to her. She was going to take it to her nursing home. So we still have this painting to this day. This is the poem that I wrote 25 years after I finished the painting. Sorry. I went back to the place where I took my first workshop, where I took the picture for my painting, and wrote this poem. Like most of the paired poems and painting in my book, this pair shares the same title, Bennington Sunset. The poem is basically about a painting but tries to take the readers to a place where the painting cannot go and engage in a dialogue across the boundaries between the visual painting and the verbal poetry. I'm going to read this poem, Bennington's Sunset. Sweeping over the dark green trees across Bennington Meadow, in the red afterglow of a summer, late summer day, I stood gazing a quarter century ago. For one brief moment to singe into my memory before darkness unfoiled. Returning years later, the trees overgrown, a tall curtain was drawn over what I knew was still there, the same glorious light, same distant mountain, same open field where the river flowed. Now every day in my Newton home, I gaze at my painting, reliving that moment in Bennington a quarter century ago, the same distant brightness brimming over the dancing edges of the once low trees. Their green, their dark dense green, aflamed to a red burning glow. What have I done to deserve this gift, this stolen glimpse, glimpse of eternity? This is uh, Dora in our kitchen, uh, our uh, breakfast table, a uh, bright summer uh, autumn day. This is the poem that accompanied this uh, painting. I'm not going to read this. It's all in my book. This is our grandson, Hugo at age three. This is Hugo a year later at the, Cape, uh, the beach in Cape Cod. This is the poem that I wrote. You can see that I tried to make the poem looking like the figure in the painting.
this is beef too. Uh, she is the daughter of my son's best friend. She was adopted from Ethiopia. And uh, beef too is her name. When I exhibited this painting at the New England Water Society National Show, uh, the people who helped me to hand this painting fought to buy this painting. And uh, so when her parents and her showed up, the painting was already sold. But the original buy a buyer was kind enough to let the parents have this painting. This is the poem that I wrote to that painting. This is a still life, a bowl of oranges. I generally don't like to paint still life because uh, still life is just still. It's not going anywhere. And there's nothing there to quote, capture, unquote. But in this case, the early morning light was so special and fleeting so fast that I have to take a picture. So making a strong case where I need photography for my, for my painting. This is uh, called the little bar. It's a night scene. It, uh, night scene offers uh, special challenges for watercolor. Because in watercolor, the conventional way of making darks are doing one layer after another layer after another layer uh, and build up the dark. This requires a lot of time for each layer to get dry. This was not the way I like to paint. I want to paint I want to finish a painting a single sitting. And to keep me from overworking the painting and from and to preserve spontaneity. So with this painting and paintings like this one, I try to paint from the dark to light with a single stroke a la prima, the way I did in my uh, European traveling sketches. D train. I, I used to ride uh, this train to work and I always managed to steal some pictures uh, of the passengers uh, each lost in their own in his or her own thought and when the train just speed in the light before it going underground. Speeding in the rain, Ireland. Uh, Dora and I traveled in Ireland and uh, it rained almost every day. So everything was in a blur as we travel on the bus speeding on the highway. This painting was done from some of the blurred pictures that I took from the bus that I almost threw away, but fortunately I kept them. And this painting was one of the ones that uh, came out of it. This is another scene from the bus. It's called the uh, Irish Farm. This, this is another scene in Ireland, Glendano, Ireland. Before I do a painting, I generally will make pencil sketches and sometimes small watercolor st studies uh, to work out the composition, uh, the tones and color. 
so that the final painting process will be just like a performance. I just let the brush dance, the color scene, and I push myself to the very edge between abandon and control. However, some of my best paintings are done without this kind of preparation. This is a, a first snow of winter. I was driving to play squash that morning and saw this familiar place transformed by the snow. So I turned around in a hurry and went home to bring my camera and shoot a few pictures uh, for this painting. Uh, I was late for squash, of course. Downtown Crossing. I generally don't like to paint buildings. Um, they remind too much of my work in architecture. But this one is really not about paintings. It's about the light and the life uh, in the city. Now, this is a poem. It's also about the light and life in a city. It's too long. I'm not going to read it. California coast. Uh, Big Sur in California. I'm sure many of you have seen something like that if you drive on Highway 1 in California. This is God's country. I had a big series of different, many paintings uh, from this place. A road in Spain. My wife and I drove through Spain uh, some time ago with our best friend, Carl and Linda Wang. And uh, on this day, at the end of the day, we drove under this great canopy of tr huge trees. I was lucky that Carl was driving and I was on the front seat with my camera. This is Argos, Spain. Argos is a town on the top of a very narrow uh, ridge in Spain. So high up that you can see birds flying under your feet. This painting is among the largest watercolor I've ever done. About 26 inches wide and 40 inches high. I first showed it in a one-person show at Brookhaven, where uh, uh, Larry and Sophia are now staying. That was a long time ago. I set the price at the highest of all my paintings. And to my surprise, a lady bought it. And later I found out that she had visited Argos with her husband in their younger days, and her husband was standing right on the same spot as that person in blue shirt was standing. Winter geranium. I've done a, a host of paintings uh, off my bed, off my bedroom window, and this is one of them. And uh, it also includes the uh, the cover of my book, "Looking Up." My uh, pa uh, paintings and poems. Uh, window has a, that special quality that invite people to look. About the same way as a picture frame does. And I also like the, to paint the window because I can juxtapose the outside to the inside. In, in, in this case, a big contrast of something very, very cold outside and something warm and glowy in the inside. Gloucester Harbor in early morning. 
I like to paint water. It can take on so many different kinds of mood. And this is very early in the morning, very calm, when the sun was just coming out. Juno Harbor. You have, if I have to pick one painting as my favorite, this would be a very strong candidate. It was on the same trip we took with Sophia and Larry in Alaska years ago. I think this scene was something like late in the afternoon, something like eight o'clock. The sun was still out and the light was so special. My mother was visiting me uh, when this painting was still wet on my drawing board in my studio. She immediately told me that she wanted it. So I told her, I will mail it to you. Uh, and uh, after I have a chance to show this in the United States. So after I submitted to many exhibitions here, I rolled this painting up, put it in a tube, sent it to Taipei, and uh, years later she died. So I went to Taipei and saw in her closet the same tube with this painting still rolled up in it. So I was so glad that I got this painting back. This is the poem I wrote about that painting. It's too long, so I'm not going to read it. But this poem, as well as the painting, is about the spirit of place, the spirit of place, which also happened to be the underlying fundamental idea in my architecture. So it's a good introduction uh, for my architecture, which I'm going to show you next. Unfortunately, I threw away most of my uh, architectural file when we moved to La Salle Village about 15 months ago. Uh, these slides are from the brochure that I happen to have kept from my office. You probably all recognize this place. This is the mall at Chestnut Hill. It, it was the very first project when I joined John Brennan in 1972. The mall was already under construction. It was designed by a specialist in mall. When the owner got dissatisfied with the old design. So they asked uh, Pietro Belusky, who was then the Dean of Architecture at MIT and, and my mentor to redesign it. Uh, Belusky didn't have an office at that time. So he gave the commission to me. The owner did not want to change the exterior because it was already finished but they gave me free hand to design the interior of the small, including the roof. So I can see the mall as a kind of a community park for all seasons, a place to gather, a place of festivity and relaxation as this photo shows. The decades later, the mall was sold to a new owner. The owner hired his architect to put in a handicap elevator, which was required by the newly passed handicap law. And the new architect took away everything. He removed the planting, he removed the grand stair, the special feature, the seating alcoves, and completely changed the spirit of the mall from a place of festivity and celebration 
to a place which is, resembles an old, tired hotel lobby. This what happens. This what happened to an architect who lived too long, I think. This is a post office, office uh, post office square, um, office tower, and the Meridian Hotel. It's also one of my earliest designs at John Brandon. This was the first high rise in downtown Boston since the Prudential Tower in the 1950s. In the early 80s, when we designed this project, there was a severe energy shortage. And we responded with a very energy efficient exterior made of precast concrete panels. Years later now, the new owner is replacing all the precast panels with an all glass scheme, <coughs> spending more money than what I have, from what I've heard, than my entire original building budget. And this make, makes me very envious. Uh, who knows what I would have done with that kind of budget. This is the interior of the Meridian Hotel, where they serve, uh, I think, where they serve, uh, use this place as a, it's an atrium, and they use it for a restaurant. You can see the hotel lobby uh, at, a, at the far end. Uh, the, uh, the hotel, the hotel is a histor historic building which once was uh, the Federal Reserve Bank. We added three stories of hotel rooms in the form of a glass bensard roof and added enough rooms to make the, fee the project feasible and got a design approved by the historical commission. This is a office lobby in Washington, D.C. Here we use the same color, colorful marble that uh, Michelangelo used in St. Peter's Cathedral uh, centuries ago. We had this marble sliced to a very, very thin sheet, only three quarters of an inch sheet, and they laminate that to a large panel backup of regular white three-quarter inch uh, white marble and have it shipped and installed in Boston for less money than the marble you can get directly from Vermont. And this soon becomes our signature office design in the 80s. This is uh, the uh, uh, student campus, student center at Tufts University. Uh, the owner wanted to have sloped roof, and I conceived this building as a link between lower campus, which is on the right side, and upper campus, which is on the left hand side, and and as a home away from home for the students. When this building was uh, freshly finished, my daughter Carol, uh, who is also an architect, was getting married. She wanted to get married in a building that her dad designed. The university was generous enough to let us have it during a Christmas recess when the students were away. This is the inside. It's a meeting hall. Actually, it's the main dining room. This is an atrium which links two buildings. 
this is the headquarter of computer vision, one of the many suburban office buildings that we have designed. And this brings the outdoors into the indoors. There's an interesting story about this building. When, when I finished this building, I, I uh, said to the owner that I can get him some artwork that, um, that will be appropriate for this building. And uh, I was thinking about Dora's uh, weaving, uh, fiber art. I can save the owner actually all the commission, which may amount to 100% of what Dora would charge directly. But the owner said to me, oh, no thanks, I have my uh, art consultant working on it already. A few days later, the art consultant called Dora and gave her the same commission. This is the uh, General Electric Plastic Business uh, headquarters at Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Uh, GE is uh, the, the world's largest producer of uh, uh, industrial plastic. Here, this is the common entrance to the new headquarters, which is connected to their existing lab, uh, serving as a common entrance. Uh, at the owner's request, we use a lot of industrial plastic uh, in the skylight of the lobby, in the handrail inside. Pointer Institute, St. Petersburg. Uh, Pointer Institute is the, um, the, the headquarters of journalism, I think, in the United States. Uh, I wanted this building to reflect the, uh, the spirit, the place of, um, of Southern uh, Florida, where this building is located. And also, in some way, reflects the uh, spirit of journalism, which is all about integrity. This is the inside classroom, the inside lobby, inside atrium. This is the um, Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. It's also one of the earliest uh, buildings that I designed at John Brennan. We finished the design around 1975. This is the home of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. I want to design the building as a celebration of music making and music listening, as well as the movement of people gathering, moving around, coming and leaving. After we finished the design, the owner decided to, uh, to wait and not to start the construction right, right away. Instead, he um, asked the city to put in some money with the intention to induce the city to take ownership to this building. We all thought that was a great idea, but what we did not foresee was by the time the city came up with their share of money five years later, the construction cost has, had escalated so much that even with the new money from the city, combined with the owner's entire originally donation, we still had to make drastic cut to the design in order to have it built. And this place, as well as the exterior, was where you felt uh, the, the, uh, the budget cut was deeply felt. We lost the kind of lofting height uh, that uh, my original design had. This is the interior of the concert hall. The owner wanted the hall, and also the city wanted the hall, to accommodate also opera 
performances. This requires good sideline from all the 2,400 seats in the hall and rule out the, the shoe box design that you'll find it in the Boston Symphony Hall and many of the best sounding uh, concert hall in the world, the old ones. They also ruled out the surround scheme uh, where the audience surround uh, the orchestra in different terraces. <clears throat> And that was used uh, first at the uh, Berlin Philharmonic Hall and quickly became the uh, scheme of choice for all the modern halls. Our real challenge here was to accommodate the scenery change for opera. The site was too small and too irregular for us to put in a backstage and we don't want to divert the already tight budget to build a big, tall uh, scenery loft like in most opera houses above the stage. This would compromise the sound for orchestra performance, which is, after all, the main purpose of this hall. So with the help of our theater consultant, we came up with a scheme using lift moving platforms, revolving stage to accommodate scenery. And with our very good uh, acoustic consultant, both Baramek and Newman, we made this hall recognized as one of the best sounding modern concert revues. This pretty much concludes my presentation. Looking back, the three things in my life, architecture, painting, and poetry, seem all have been written by the same impulse, which is one, to seek, two, to problem solve, and three, to create. These impulses are what fueled my passion and gave me so much joy in the process. They also gave me the opportunity, opportunity to give back some of what I have received. For that, I consider myself extremely lucky and I'm very grateful for that. In ending, I will read a poem that I recently composed on my Uh, on the three things, on my poetry, painting, and architecture. Under the same eternal sky, would you hundreds of years from now read my poems, view my paintings, live my buildings? Would they be still around? Have you noticed how the spring flowers and autumn leaves let go their lar last fragrance and color will unequivocal abandon under the eternal sky as they fall to the ground? Would you know that it's with the same rapture that I pour out my spaces, strokes, and words, not without questioning and thanksgiving, under the same eternal sky. Thank you. So that's, uh, that concludes my talk. I'm ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Baba, for your presentation.
，要不然就是写在这个啊、呃、chat 上头，要不然就现在就可以开始问了。Today, don't worry about it. Yeah, hi, hi, Bob. Hi. Really enjoy your talk. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I cannot let you go. Without hearing some detailed description as how did you catch this beautiful painting of Piftu? Oh, Piftu. Oh, yeah. She. I mean, it's it's so personal and catching. I'm sure you you spend a lot of time. I've never seen anything that's that's difficult to. So difficult to forget, and I look at the picture, and 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 I I, I dream about the girl. Is、uh, can you can you just elaborate? How did you do it? Oh, thank you, David.、Uh, actually, this particular painting that I show you was a small study of a larger painting that I did not with only with Beef Two, but with my two grandchildren, Hugo and Oscar. And they were, my two grandsons were sitting on either side of beef two, and talking to each other across beef two, so beef two was then very happy. So that was a moment somehow was captured in camera. So before I did the larger painting, I did a portrait of each separately, smaller one as a study, but a study. As usual, would come out turn out better than a finished、uh, big painting. So this is the small study. Thank you. That girl's expression, and her even that hair, the hair that she wears, is so smooth and smooth. That's so 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 smooth. Yeah, 尤其你们也是很会画画的啊，嗯、um, ，James Zhu 啊 ，David Shaw， 你们都可以跟我们分享你们的，他们都好。Bob is talent in a different different world. I I I I just admire everything he 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 has done. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. 水彩画啊、哦，好好好啊、哦，非常好。那个街景，那个水彩画，第一幅那个也是好好，嗯 ，very nice。Can I talk? Ah,、uh, can I talk? This is Larry Ho. We can hear you. Oh, can you hear me? We can hear you. You can hear me. Oh, Bob, this is Larry Ho. What、yes. a treat! Visual treat you gave us. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And what's more, your talk gave me let me have a glimpse of a how a poet and painter and architect life and passion. You know, being in a different profession, I never had this kind of appreciation. So I really thank you for this talk. And also, let me congratulate you on the seventieth anniversary of your life in the United States. You know, I arrived in the United States about the same time as you did. Yeah, so yeah. I really appreciate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, It's a great and, country.、Uh, We're fortunate. Yes, to be living here. Also, you know, as you mentioned, you have done since give talks in Brookhaven, and we have now moved into here. Into a much smaller space, but、mm -hmm. in my study, I have I'm honored to have one of your paintings, which I look at every day. And、uh, to answer your questions, yes, I will remember this to my dying days. <laughs> have a look at.、It. So thank you again. Bye bye.
我们不但有有 Bob 呃跟我们讲分享他的三个追求跟跟辉煌的成就，好像郑玄还请了他、呃、嗯 Dora 下个月来跟我们讲他的一些 talent， 大家希望大家好像是十一月初。十一月的专题演讲，十一月我我有点忘记是哪一天，反正就是十一月的第第二个礼拜三，是是不是 Dora 会讲哈？哇呀，好好棒，他们夫妇好 talented。大家还有没有什么要跟跟爸爸分享的？有什么感言？ Well. 爸爸是朋友，呃，是朋友你。看了你这些，好好感动啊！我也很羡慕你的人生，有这么多不同的 talent， 然后都可以留下，然后然后让世界上人都有机会来 enjoy 你的成就，实在太棒了，实在太棒。那个，我想问你，那个像你那点赞的音乐厅，大概是多少多久？就说怎么样一个过程是？能够想出这么好的一个音音乐厅出来，我做这个东西最重要的是，就是有个有一个 owner， 他给钱 ，this that's the first requirement， and a, and the owner who want to have a good hall， and will not compromise for anything less the best the architect will give， so that's the first requirement。As far as the designing of the hall goes, we worked right from the beginning with、um, Robert Newman from both Berenik and Newman. So the first thing we decided is how many seats we want to put in there. And generally, of course, from the owner's point of view, he wants as many seats as possible. But we have found out from experience that the largest concert hall that Sounds, the sounds good. Has no more than about two thousand four hundred some seats. That's about a seat、uh, at the Boston Symphony Hall. So we settled on that, and then we decided how big a volume the hall has to be, and that would determine the reverberation time of the sound in the hall. So we wanted to have our reverberation time around two seconds. Boston Symphony Hall is 1.9 something second. This is about the reverberation sound for all the great sounding halls in the、uh, in the world. So we determined that, and then then we have to fit it on a site. The site happened to be a very tight and irregular site. So that gave me a cue, an excuse to use a kind of a free form to just to fit it in. So that gave me some, actually, some advantage in my opinion. So from there on, it's just work,、uh, very enjoyable work,、uh, but it's it's nice.、Uh, the budget, of course, is always a challenge of every architectural project. <laughs> Thank you, Yao. Very great to. To see all your work together, you know, you come, you put together so well. To thank you so much. Well, thank you, Yao Wu. Without your help, I would not be able to show them. You are you doing great today? Wonderful. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi.、Uh, I'm Spencer.、Uh, Hi, Spencer. We didn't have much chance to, to interact. However, you gave me a sense. You must have a huge database. This is a layman question. You have all the 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 impression of something didn't happen or happened long time ago. For instance, the Symphony Hall. You didn't know how the audio effect could be. However, you have that huge database. You know what to to do to judge, and then and then you can you can even even recreate something happening in the past. I 
this is my little appreciation about what you just said. Am I far off? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. We, I, I think we, uh, as I mentioned, we work in a big team. The acoustic con uh, consulting is a major part of our team. So almost every decision has to go through acoustic first. Does it help the sound? So that was the first uh, thing. And then uh, everything else, of course, the sideline has to be uh, perfect. So we have to study the sideline, uh, uh, which will determine the slope of the seating and all that, and the balcony and whatnot. Um, so it's fun. It's one of the uh, the project that gives me more fun, and uh, it only happens once in a lifetime. I, I did not get another hall. I have many proposals of other halls, but one way or the other, they didn't get built. Only this one got built, so I was lucky. In particular, my last question is that streets uh, picture drove with uh, the uh, maybe maybe after after rain yep. somewhere you did the Liu Bai. You have a white area, so that the, the puddle is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all those things are happen in very in, small instant. How you must have a, a sharp way to catch all those good things, well, and then even recreate it, right? Well, <clears throat> you know, not all the ones that are doing a hurry turn out well. This is one of the ones that really turn out well. But again, even though I've made a lot of studies for most of my painting, it, it happens that some of the very best happen that way, just without any preparation at the spur of the moment. Uh, so that's, uh, that's interesting. I can't explain it. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for your questions. Ben Xuan, do you have anything to say? Or do you want to say something? I have one question. Sure, okay, go ahead. You mentioned one of your daughter is also an architect. Yes. Does she also paint? Uh, she draws. She draws very well. She she also paints, but that wasn't her main thing. She draws. Yeah. Okay. We we love to hear more about her in the future. <音>那个爸那个太太像这边也出就是对对对对对他会讲他他我那是他工作的就是一家人都是so Oh,爸爸,你有没有画国画呢? 
，他那个都太慢了，所以退休以后 pick up 很快。对对，希望他有机会给我们分享一下。对呀、啊，我请了他蛮多次了，啊，他还在继续请，他他总是会把他请出来的，放心。那我们今天可能就就到这里就结束了。假如大家没有什么问题的话，那我们就十分太谢谢巴巴今天给我们精彩的讲座，让我们大开眼界。这是啊，这是一级大师啊，哈。所以我们下个月。十一十一月，哎呀，我现在没有日历在在这里。十一月的第一第二个礼拜三，请大家再看再来听这个 Dora 熊的 presentation。他给我们现在是十一十一月九号，十一月谢谢谢谢灿灿，十一月九号礼拜三，大家都这么 talent， 谢谢谢谢，我们实在是受益匪浅。希望有空、yeah. 你们还是会到 G B C C A 来啊、哦，现在。那我大概介绍了，我们都重新都修复了，很新的有这个大厅，好的，谢谢你，谢谢你，巴布熊，谢谢。我可以再讲一句话，谢谢好，吃饭菜，好。呀、yeah, ，啊，非常谢谢熊先生给我们今天的 presentation 啊，听了以后我觉得非常感动，啊，光是看那个你的话已经觉得非常棒哦，再加上你 pair with your poem。就更能够表达你作画的这个心情呀。Yeah. 然后今天好像觉得上了一个哲学课一样，因为你把这个画里面的一个一些的 fleeting scene， 然后对比这个 etern eternity， 我觉得相当有意义。非常谢谢你。Yeah. 还有你告诉我们一些你的 personal 这些画的故事。比如说你那个 Juno 的那个 h o r b e r 呀，后来你妈妈买去，然后后来你又拿到这个，还有你女儿在你这个呃，你 TikTok 的建的这个 building 里面举行婚礼，我觉得这些 personal story 都相当有兴趣。要谢谢你的分享 ，Thank you。谢谢，谢谢。谢谢大家，谢谢巴熊，谢谢花这么多时间，谢谢 Sophia 给我们介绍，谢谢，谢谢汤耀武。